Hello YouTube, Salivate Metal here. Some of you remember my prior video about the Supreme Court and its uh, decision whether or not to hear the case was going to be coming up. And well, that time has passed and they declined to hear the case, which a little sort of surprises me, but in other ways it doesn't. The U.S. Supreme Court has declined to hear the case according to this uh, Coin World article here, which I'll post a link in the description below. Um, they declined to hear the case involving the ownership of the 10 1933 St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagles, thus apparently bringing an end to a decade-long legal battle over who gets to keep the coins. The Supreme Court's decision means that the coins will remain the property of the federal government, will not be returned to the Langbord family, which reportedly discovered the 10 coins in a family safe deposit box in 2003. The family, uh, Joan Langbord and her sons, Roy and David, turned them over to the United States Mint in 2004 for authentica authentication. Mint officials informed the family in 2005 that it was keeping the coins. A legal battle over ownership ensued, with both parties to the suit at different points being awarded the coins. The last court decision made August 1, 2016 by an appeals court found that the government repossessed its own property and in doing so asserted its ownership rights to the coins. So uh, very interesting indeed how this has all uh, happened. And you will see here later on, we'll talk about the different sort of the contradictions of this. You know, as mentioned above, you know, the, the um, decisions sided with the family and then sided with the government. And so now this basically seals the fate of those 10 coins and uh, puts them in the government's hands. But uh, so reading on here, the first about the safe deposit box, the legislature found that has grown to revolve around two key questions with broad implications. The first question is whether when the government seizes property from private citizens, and intends to retain it indefinitely, it can avoid the procedures, deadlines, and penalties set forth in the Civil Asset Forfeiture Reform Act of 2000 by merely asserting that the property was stolen from the government and declaring that it is no intention of seeking forfeiture. The second question is whether the government can avoid uh, CAFRA's protections by strategically waiting for years and then filing a declaratory judgment claim that seeks essentially the same relief as is barred by CAFRA. The government has since held at least 1944 that 1933 double eagles are illegal to own, citing executive orders by President Franklin Roosevelt in 1933 that halted the release of gold coins from government inventories among other provisions. The government contends that Roosevelt's orders meant no 1933 double eagles could have been released legally, other than two presented at the Smithsonian Institution, and that any surviving examples in private hands could only have been obtained illegally. However, at least 10 of the 1933 double eagles entered the marketplace in the 1930s and 40s, all or most originating from the hands of Israel Swit, a Philadelphia jeweler and coin dealer, and father of Joan Langbord. Examples of the 1933 double eagles are sold openly in the marketplace for years, even being advertised in hobby publications with no government interference. Interesting. I have a copy of the 1933 double eagle. In 1944, however, officials made two contradictory decisions in short order that forever changed how the coins were perceived. The first decision was to grant Egypt an export license for one of the coins for the collection of King Farouk. Officials determined that the coin fit the standards and permitted some rare gold coins to be privately owned. Shortly thereafter, another example of the coin was scheduled to appear in an auction by Stax. A journalist uh, recovering the auction queried the mint on why the 1933 double eagle was considered rare. As stated by Stax, mint officials who looked more deeply at the records determined that none of the coins had been released to the public through normal channels. An ensuing investigation by the Secret Service led to Swit, who acknowledged having sold 10 of the coins, including the piece that King Farouk eventually acquired. Agents tracked down the nine remaining coins over a period of years, and all were confiscated and eventually melted. 
Egypt refused to return the Farouk coin, and then the Farouk collection was sold at auction in 1954. The uh, 1933 double eagle was removed from the sale at the request of the U.S. government. The coin then disappeared from public view. A coin alleging, alleging to be the Farouk example resurfaced in 1996 and was seized by U.S. authorities. A long legal battle ended when the government and the dealer claimed ownership of the coin reached an agreement that permitted the coin to be sold at auction with the two parties splitting the proceeds. The proceeds, the coin sold for $7.59 million in July 2002 auction, which was the highest ever paid for a coin at that time. Officials have never disclosed why they agreed to allow the coin to be sold, and they continue to hold that no other examples can be owned. Nonetheless, in addition to the two coins held by the Smithsonian, the 10 Langbord coins held by the Mint and the coin owned by the unnamed party since its purchase in 2002 auction, at least one other 1933 double legal is known to be held in an unnamed collection. It is also uncertain whether the coin sold in 2002 truly is a Farouk coin or whether it's another piece with an unpublished pedigree. What will happen to the 10 double legal Eagle coins currently held at the Mint's Fort Knox Gold Bullion Depository. Mint officials have said the coins will not be melted, as were the pieces that were confiscated from collectors and dealers more than 60 years ago. Beyond that, though, little has been revealed publicly about the future of the coins. So very, very interesting indeed um, that uh, this uh, this particular um, development and that the coins will retain be retained the government the uh the property of the government my guess is they will probably sell them at auction one at a time and they will get a lot of money other people are speculating that perhaps that the there are others out there that just have not come to light because people are smart and you know it wouldn't surprise me if somebody has one of these coins and it's legit you know, to get them authenticated means that you are going basically uh, putting yourself at risk of losing the coin. So why not just melt it down yourself and get the gold's bullion value out of it? Hey, you walk away with something. It may only be just a little less than an ounce of gold that you will be acquiring in, uh, in you know, the cost. But hey, it's better than losing it to the government or to whoever else and perhaps potentially getting into trouble. So we shall see what will happen and if any more of these turn up. Post your thoughts below on this development. I'd like to extend the multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.